Well, hello there everyone, and welcome to a quick little late night video with UXW Bill that happens to be in high definition only because that was the camcorder that sprang most readily to hand when I decided to make this particular video. I emerged from my basement lair tonight where I've been plotting world domination only to find that the compact fluorescent lamp illuminating the first room of the basement apparently had finally hung it up. I first thought that someone had performed the oh-so-popular trick of turning off the light on me, meaning that I'd have to fumble my way back up the steps once I'd turned off all the lights down here. Unfortunately, there is not a light switch located down here for the first lamp that illuminates the primary room in the basement. But, such was not the case. I went upstairs and I discovered the switch was still on, this little General Electric compact fluorescent apparently just finally gave it up. And it's always a toss-up with these as to what actually fails first. Is it the bulb or the electronics? And as of late, in more recent production bulbs, I find that the electronics usually outlive the bulbs, if only just. And it looks like this one basically gave in to the cathode poisoning that slowly claims just about every fluorescent lamp ever made sooner or later. Even so, the electronics on these things are not high quality by any stretch of the imagination. They certainly can't hold a candle to the lifespan of real fluorescent lamps, such as the 30-some-odd-year-old preheat fixture and its magnetic ballast, along with the 40-odd-year-old Trofer-style ceiling fixture that are illuminating everything you see in this video right now. These things tend to expire at a very depressing rate compared to real fluorescent lamps. But the thing I wanted to see, the entire reason for making this particular video has to do with this little filter capacitor that was sitting in the base of the lamp far away from everything else. It's interesting to see that General Electric or whoever actually manufactured this lamp on their behalf tried to preserve this capacitor's lifetime for as long as they could by tucking it down in the base of the lamp as far away from the servicing electronics and the heat of the tube as they could. Although this particular bulb was hanging with the base up from a ceiling fixture, so they really can't have hoped to have saved the capacitor from much heat in that particular case. And that's what brings me to this particular juncture. I am just curious because this is an off-brand capacitor, 220 volts, 22 microfarad, manufactured by Aishi. Somebody just sneeze in here? <laughs> Supposed to be 105 degrees Celsius rated part. I'm curious as to how closely it still meets its original criteria. And although this is certainly not a test under anything remotely approaching full load, well, if it can't pass this little test, then I guess there's really no hope for this thing as a capacitor in a much more demanding role. So let's just see what happens here. It looks like it's actually surprisingly close to what it should be, certainly well within any kind of reasonable tolerance, especially for a cheap little electrolytic capacitor. So, thank you for watching, and certainly do feel free to leave a comment if you have one. But be nice.